Before we get into today's episode, I want to let you know about a source of powerful free resources to help you as a parent or grandparent get equipped to invest in the faith of the next generation. Our Next Gen website has been designed to help empower you to navigate tough issues with the young people in your life. At NextGen, you'll find articles, entertainment reviews from a Christian perspective, parenting stories, helpful parenting guides, and even answers to the tough questions. All these resources are free as you engage on the front line of raising the next generation for Jesus. So why not register today at premierinsight.org forward slash resources to receive free resources from NextGen. That's premierinsight.org forward slash resources. And now it's time for today's podcast. The Bible in a Year, bringing the Word to life. Father God, your Son, Jesus Christ, told his disciples, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Help me to listen carefully, to learn from them, and treasure them in my heart. Amen. Psalm 52 Why do you boast of evil, you mighty hero? Why do you boast all day long, you who are a disgrace in the eyes of God? You who practice deceit, your tongue plots destruction, it is like a sharpened razor. You love evil rather than good, falsehood rather than speaking the truth. You love Every harmful word, you deceitful tongue. Surely God will bring you down to everlasting ruin. He will snatch you up and pluck you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear. They will laugh at you, saying, Here now is the man who did not make God his stronghold, but trusted in his great wealth and grew strong by destroying others. But I am like an olive tree, flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love for ever and ever. For what you have done, I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people. And I will hope in your name, for your name is good. Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 53. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple praising God. Joshua chapters 13 and 14 When Joshua had grown old, The Lord said to him, You are now very old, and there are still very large areas of land to be taken over. This is the land that remains. All the regions of the Philistines and the Geshurites, 
from the river Shehor on the east of Egypt to the territory of Ekron on the north, all of it counted as Canaanite, though held by the five Philistine rulers in Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gath and Ekron, the territory of the Avites on the south, all the land of the Canaanites from Arach of the Sidonians as far as Aphek and the border of the Amorites, the area of Byblos and all Lebanon to the east, from Baal Gad below Mount Hermon to Labo Hammer. As for all the inhabitants of the mountain regions from Lebanon to Mishrafoth Mam, that is all the Sidonians, I myself will drive them out before the Israelites. Be sure to allocate this land to Israel for an inheritance, as I have instructed you, and divide it as an inheritance among the nine tribes and half of the tribe of Manasseh. The other half of Manasseh, the Reubenites and the Gadites had received the inheritance that Moses had given them east of the Jordan, as he, the servant of the Lord, had assigned it to them. It extended from Arur on the rim of the Arnon Gorge, and from the town in the middle of the gorge, and included the whole plateau of Medaba as far as Debon, and all the towns of Sion, king of the Amorites, who ruled in Heshbon, out to the border of the Ammonites. It also included Gilead, the territory of the people of Geshur and Macha, all of Mount Hermon and all Bashan as far as Salakar, that is the whole kingdom of Og in Bashan, who had reigned in Ashtaroth and Edre. He was the last of the Rephates. Moses had defeated them and taken over their land, But the Israelites did not drive out the people of Geshur and Macha, so they continued to live among the Israelites to this day. But to the tribe of Levi he gave no inheritance, since the food offerings presented to the Lord, the God of Israel, are their inheritance, as he promised them. This is what Moses had given to the tribe of Reuben, according to its clans the territory from Arur on the rim of the Arnon Gorge and from the town in the middle of the gorge and the whole plateau past Medaba, to Heshbon and all its towns on the plateau, including Debon, Bamath Baal, Beth Baal Meon, Jahaz, Kedamoth, Mephath, Kirathame, Sibma, Sereth Shahar on the hill in the valley, Beth Peel, the slopes of Pisgah, and Beth Jeshimoth. All the towns on the plateau and the entire realm of Sion, king of the Amorites, who ruled at Heshbon. Moses had defeated him, and the Midianite chiefs, Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, and Reba, princes allied with Sion, who lived in that country. In addition to those slain in battle, the Israelites had put to the sword Balaam, son of Beor, who practised divination. The boundary of the Reubenites was the bank of the Jordan. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the Reubenites according to their clans. This is what Moses had given to the tribe of Gad according to its clans, the territory of Jezer, all the towns of Gilead and half the Ammonite country as far as Erur near Rabbah, and from Heshbon to Ramath, Mizpah and Betonim, and from Mahanaim to the territory of Dabir, and in the valley Beth Haram, Beth Nimrah, Sichoth and Zaphon, with the rest of the realm of Sihon, king of Heshbon, the east side of the Jordan, the territory up to the end of the Sea of Galilee. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the Gadites, according to their clans. This is what Moses had given to the half-tribe of Manasseh, that is, to half the family of the descendants of Manasseh, according to its clans. The territory extending from Machanaim and including all of Bashan, the entire realm of Og, king of Bashan, all the settlements of Jair and Bashan, 60 towns, 
half of Gilead and Ashtaroth and Edre, the royal cities of Og in Bashan. This was for the descendants of Machiah, son of Manasseh, for half of the sons of Machiah, according to their clans. This is the inheritance Moses had given when he was in the plains of Moab across the Jordan east of Jericho. But to the tribe of Levi, Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance, as he promised them. Now, these are the areas the Israelites received as an inheritance in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar, the priest, Joshua, son of Nun, and the heads of the tribal clans of Israel allotted to them. Their inheritances were assigned by lot to the nine and a half tribes, as the Lord had commanded through Moses. Moses had granted the two and a half tribes their inheritance east of the Jordan, but had not granted the Levites an inheritance among the rest. For Joseph's descendants had become two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. The Levites received no share of the land, but only towns to live in, with pasture lands for their flocks and herds. So the Israelites divided the land, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Now the people of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me. I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land, and I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my fellow Israelites who went up with me made the hearts of the people sink. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day Moses swore to me, The land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children for ever, because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses, while Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now, give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there, and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out, just as he said. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenazite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba, after Arba, who was the greatest man among the Anakites. Then the land had rest from war. Father God, thank you for your word to us today. We confess we can get wrapped up in our lives. Please help us to focus our hearts and minds on you. Teach us to trust and to hope in you. May we live our lives for you today. Amen. For more resources to help you bring the word to life, go to premier.org.uk forward slash Bible. This reading has been taken from the NIV Bible Biblica and is published by Hodder and Stoughton. When was the last time you took a careful look at your property taxes? You could be overpaying by thousands. But now, there's an easy way to only pay what's fair. I'm Colton Pace, founder and CEO of OwnWell. I started OwnWell to make reducing property taxes easy and affordable for everyone. We help you avoid becoming one of the millions who pay more than their fair share. At OwnWell, we can save you thousands on your property taxes while you sit back and relax. 
Our team of local tax experts combine cutting edge technology and years of experience to manage your property tax case from start to finish, helping you save time and money with no upfront costs. It only takes a few minutes to save $1,000 or more. We do all the work and you only pay if you save. That's our savings or free guarantee. Stop paying more than your fair share. Ownwell will help you lower your property taxes. Sign up in less than three minutes to get started today at ownwell.com. That's O-W-N-W-E-L-L dot com.